Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking. I am your host, Aurelio Voltaire. Recently, I took you on a tour around the world in search of five monster-themed restaurants, each corresponding with one of the main universal monsters. So that's Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Mummy, and Creature from the Black Lagoon, and I threw a little Jekyll and Hyde in there just for good measure. Well, today we're gonna do that again. We're gonna go across this planet in search of five more monster-themed restaurants, but this time, the sky's the limit on monsters. We're gonna see everything from The Walking Dead to The King of Kaiju. But first, we're gonna start in New York City, my hometown, with a place inspired by that scary prankster of the afterlife, Beetlejuice, and by extension, all of Tim Burton's films. A little place quite close to me, a place called Beetle House. Take a look. Step into Beetle House and you'll be transported to a tiny Tim Burton themed land where whimsical characters look like they might want to cuddle you or kill you. Decorations that are simultaneously macabre and cute will drag you into a downward spiral into a land where every day is Halloween and there's always clouds in the skies. But don't bring your fair weather friends to this place. Bring someone who's as creepy and kooky as you are. I invited my friend Audrey, who's always down for a spooky fun time. The walls are covered in Tim Burton fan art, and it doesn't take much to cover them because the room is very small. In fact, I believe there's less than 10 tables at Beetle House. So be sure to get those reservations, because they're necessary. While you're there, you'll probably meet a Tim Burton character. The night that I was there was Emily from Corpse Bride. Are you betrothed already? I am. Oh, good, great. Till death Tim do us too. part. But it could just as easily be Sweeney Todd or Edward Scissorhands or Beetlejuice himself. Don't forget to tip your actors. After all, there's no better way to get them tipsy. Speaking of tipsy, the menu has a very inventive list of cocktails. I myself ordered the Coco Skellington, which I found to be mysterious, explosive, and exciting. While dining there, you'll be having a three-course price-fixed meal of dishes with Tim Burton-inspired names. Of all of the monster-themed restaurants I went to, this was the one with the most vegan options. Both Audrey and I found the food to be better than expected for a themed restaurant. Perhaps you could say that in satisfaction, we were equally matched. Isn't that right, Emily? I had the Sweeney beef that came with this straight razor, which I think I'm gonna use to shave one of my enemies later. The dessert was bloody fantastic, one of the most beautiful presentations I'd ever seen. And Audrey thought it was sinfully delicious. I love the whimsical decor and the delicious food and the inventive drinks. The only thing I was left wondering was, how is Tim Burton not getting a royalty check for all of this? Hot on the heels of the popularity of Beetle House, another location has opened up in Los Angeles, California. And that's gonna be our second destination. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait a minute, that's the same monster theme restaurant. Perhaps, but when you see this segment, I think that you will agree that the Los Angeles location deserves its own special place of honor on this list of monster theme restaurants. Let's go west. At the LA Beetle House, everything is simply bigger and badder. If you like the New York one, this place is like Christmas. Upon entering, you'll find Oogie Boogie lording over a merchandise booth that has memorabilia that includes the Beetle House cookbook. The main bar is like a waiting room for the recently deceased, and there, costume characters work the crowd. You'll find lots of Tim Burton's beloved creations, and you can fall into a photo booth and get some pictures before your night spirals out of control. Take your date outside and warm up under a familiar fireplace, and who knows, things just may heat up out there. Back in the main bar, you can order drinks and you can order food, but the real beauty of L.A. Beetle House is behind these doors. If you've made reservations, you will be welcomed into the afterlife where Beetlejuice himself heckles the crowd in a room full of Tim Burton-inspired art, like these familiar Halloween trees. There are performances every 20 minutes, and a devilishly handsome host introduces Ichabod Crane and the Mad Hatter and Beetlejuice or whatever characters are performing that evening. These costume characters mingle with the crowd all night long, crazily staying in character like Ichabod Crane who wanted to know what the hell this device was that I was pointing at him and also insisted I teach him what a cocktail was. Speaking of drinks, they have a lot of the same drinks that are featured at Beetle House New York and of course they also have big fish bowls intended for two people. 
I had the embalming fluid by myself, and I found it exhilarating. You can choose from two price fix menus, the recently deceased for $48, or the slightly fancier Poltergeist for $51. Both of them have quite a lot of options, and once again, many vegan and gluten-free options. I had the shrimp and grits, which was absolutely delicious, followed by the Edward Burger Hands, which I thought had a fake little novelty scissor in it, but no, it was real. Dessert made a big splash, especially this Wonderland Mango Panna Cotta, which was really fresh and delicious. But don't get too full because by the end of the night, a conga line might just form and you're gonna have to shake, shake, shake and jump in the line. Cause every night at LA Beetle House, rocks your body on time. Well, Beetlejuice surely knows how to shake it all the time in the afterlife. In fact, he could probably give some advice to this next group of monsters. Some beings who refuse to leave our plane of existence, despite having already shuffled off this mortal coil. You know, like Orville Dedenbacher over there. <laughs> In any case, I am talking, of course, of zombies. And if you'd like to have dinner with zombies, there's two places that you can do that. But first, we're gonna have to travel to Mexico City. So, vamos a Mexico a comer con los zombies. In the Tlalpan section of Mexico City, you will find the Nasty Zombie Diner. Upon entering, you're instantly greeted by the welcoming committee, and let me tell you, they are a motley crew and there's a horde of them. Everywhere you look, zombies are reaching out for your brains. The zombie apocalypse is in full effect as evidenced by these signs and a post-apocalyptic car. And speaking of food, let me just say, I will not have what she's having. And if you find the chef, don't ask him what he's cooking up because it might just turn your stomach. However, if all of this rotten flesh has gotten you hungry, find an attendant and ask him to seat you at a booth. Find your way to a booth and crack open the menu and you'll find hamburgers and pizzas that have toppings similar to what you put in a taco. I ordered the hamburger with a blood red bun and I have to tell you, it was better than jellied brains. Certainly better than what the chef had in mind. No mama's way. There's another zombie diner in Insurgente Centro. Walking into this place, you instantly feel like you have walked into yet another zombie apocalypse with discarded corpses and graffiti everywhere. That is, until you go up the stairs and you find this red-lit, sexy dining room with chandeliers. Follow this zombie's sight lines and you will see that trouble is ahead, as well as other body parts. I'd give the designer of this place a hand. Horror props and other zombies flush out the room. And once again, there's our friend the chef, who just always seems to be trying to get ahead. It is a dog-eat-dog -dog business after all. If you look out the window onto Insurgentes, you're gonna see that there's people just dying to crawl into this place. I met up with some of my spooky friends who I imagine just used the front door. From the menu, I ordered a mojito and a vegetarian burrito. And we ordered one of those pizzas that was half big pig and half little pig. With two varieties of savory pork usually seen inside of tacos, everyone around the table agreed that it was delicioso. That's several thumbs up. Mama, ¿por no me diste pizza? <sighs> So if you like delicious food and zombies, take shelter at the Zombie Diner. The Zombie Diner has two locations, but unlike Beetle House, they're in the same city. So I'm going to count them as one monster-themed restaurant. That brings us up to three so far. For our fourth destination, we're going to travel all of the way to Tokyo, Japan. But where else would you meet Godzilla? In the very busy Shinjuku section of Tokyo, there is a place affectionately called Godzilla Road. And there, appropriately enough, above the Toho Cinemas, is the Hotel Gracery, which has a very famous permanent guest. Every night, a familiar tune is heard, and through the magic of lights and sounds and smoke, 
that very famous guest terrorizes the villagers below. For a closer look at Godzilla, I would suggest renting a room at the Hotel Gracery. There's a Godzilla room for big fans that's full of Godzilla memorabilia, but I chose the Godzilla View Room. Upon checking in, you get a free Godzilla tote and towel, which I'll be giving to one of you by the end of this episode, so stay tuned for how to win that. In true Tokyo form, the rooms are absolutely tiny, but I have to say, the bathtub was one of the nicest I've been in of late, and the toilet, well, I think that might have been made by the same people who made Mecha Godzilla. But the real star here is the view. Turn off the lights, and you will have a front row seat to the king of kaiju, terrorizing Tokyo. There are three looks, if you will, for Godzilla from this window. There's this one when he's lit up at night, and in the morning when you rise, Godzilla will rise with you, looking, well, let's just say more au naturel. Now, mind you, this is before his morning coffee, and I'd say be careful of that morning breath, because it's a killer. Well, I mean, it is Godzilla breath, after all. But my favorite look is at night when they turn off the lights. That's when he looks the most realistic. And that's when you can best live your childhood fantasy of having a pet Godzilla outside of your window. If these close encounters aren't close enough, head down to the lobby, past the dozens of Godzilla movie posters, maybe quiz yourself and see how many of these films you've actually seen. You'll pass a large Godzilla sculpture at the Café Terrasse Bonjour and head straight for the Godzilla head. Out on the terrace, you will find a Godzilla-themed installation that has beautiful relief sculptures like these. And there's a crack in the wall where you can allegedly touch his skin, and when you do, he lets out an awesome roar. Speaking of roars, Godzilla roars once an hour about nine times a day, but only as a guest of the hotel can you get close enough for a highly sought-after selfie and a front-row seat to the roar itself. Now at this point you're probably wondering, hey Voltaire, this is a hotel, not a restaurant. How did it make it onto the list? Well, the only other way to get this close to Godzilla is to make a reservation here at the Café Terrasse Bonjour. This is the Godzilla tote bag I told you about and one of you is going to take this home. Stick around to the end to find out how. Now while we're still in Tokyo, Japan, I'm going to take you to our fifth and final monster theme restaurant. And it's appropriate that I left it for the end because it really is the dessert of monster theme restaurants. It's called Kawaii Monsters Cafe, which literally means cute monsters in Japanese. I almost didn't go to this place because I like scary monsters. I just didn't know that cute monsters had a place in this episode. But I am so glad I went. Take a look. Travel to Harajuku and you will be at the very epicenter of Tokyo's alternative youth culture. If you can manage not to spend all of your money at the many Lolita, cosplay, and alternative clothing shops, find your way to the end of the street and go to the Kawaii Monsters Cafe. Go up the escalator to the fourth floor and you'll be asked to pay a 500 yen admission price and you'll be informed there's a 90 minute time limit in the restaurant. The concept here is that there's a monster called Choppy and you're about to walk along his long red tongue and into his stomach. Inside, you're greeted by adorable kawaii monster girls and Choppy himself. They walk around the room interacting with guests and they're happy to pose for photos. For monsters, they're extremely friendly like Sieru here, who's always happy to meet a fellow monster. In the center of the restaurant is a giant rotating birthday cake. This whole place seems to answer the question, what if Tim Burton turned in his goth card and took a truckload of acid? <laughs> the place is full of whimsical swirls and curls. Step into a booth and you'll feel like it's lunchtime at a certain candy factory. It's just absolutely bananas. As if Willy Wonka moved the factory to Wonderland, surrounded by giant mushrooms and alien foliage, and ice cream on the ceiling? It's positively mad. So why not dine in a teacup? Or in a room full of oversized strawberries and cream and candy-colored macarons? It's enough to make your mouth water. Speaking of water, slide over to the bar and you'll feel like you've been engulfed by a giant phosphorescent jellyfish. And if that's not surreal enough for you, 
you can sit under giant colorful animals drinking milk from bottles. Speaking of colorful, the food on the menu is just as colorful as everything else in this crazy place. I thought, there's no way it's going to really look like that. And yet, it totally did. I had the black curry, and I have to say, it was the best Japanese curry I had on the whole trip. It was... Totemo oishi deshita. The choppy burger also looked just like it did on the menu, and it was delicious. I also got fries, which came with a colorful palette of dipping sauces that included ketchup, mustard, wasabi, cheese, and um, blue. Sadly, I was too full for dessert, which was a shame with selections like melty pancake and pink cat food. Though the enormous colorful poison parfait for $22 is the star of the show. And speaking of shows... Are you ready? Yeah! Every hour or so, the kawaii monsters put on a dance show on a rotating birthday cake. Presumably to work off that poison parfait. It's a big hit with the kids and us silly monster-loving adults alike. All in all, the kawaii monsters cafe was an absolute scream. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed our second tour around the world looking at monster-themed restaurants. I'm not done by a long shot. I've got another episode coming up where I take you to horror-themed bars to scream about. I'm gonna give him away. Does anybody wanna win Orville Dettenbacher? Is that even considered winning? <laughs> well, in any case, speaking of winning, Here's that tote bag with the Godzilla towel inside, and one of you is going to take this home, and here's how. Play this little game with me. Number one, like the video. Number two, let's pretend I'm making a Godzilla movie, except it's about a character called Gothzilla. And the name of that film is... Fill in the blank in the comments below, and one of you is going to take that home. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time right here on Gothic Homemaking.